here we are back for the fourth and final uh, lesson of this full weekly um, workshop using acrylics, introducing acrylics. So today I'm just priming up um, some MDF for them. Now you don't have to prime MDF, it's quite nice to paint on directly. But um, as we're going to be doing a glazing technique today, we're going to be doing blending and glazing with the acrylics. Uh, it's nicer to have a nice white um, prime background, smooth background to, to work on to. So most primers these days, this is just white emulsion, most emulsions are acrylic emulsions these days. And what I normally do, because one can use a coloured acrylic as well, you just use ordinary acrylics to prime. But brush it on and then brush it one way, backwards and forwards carefully to get a nice even grain. And then normally I'll give it a second coat and I put the second coat on in the opposite direction so we get on to canvas feel. What I've done this time, as it dries so quickly, is I'm going to just lightly go across it the other way so we get this slight canvas texturing to take up the paint. So it's got a crisscross, very light crisscross texturing. Notice this paint is pink. One of those lovely paints that when it's dry it goes pure white so you can see that it's dry. So we could use the acrylics just onto the MDF direct, but it's quite nice to have a white surface if we're doing glazing, just like watercolour, so that we can really work out these lighter, more vibrant um, colours. And of course you could always uh, paint with uh, colour option or yes. um, <coughs> to do a primer. Right, so when we do perspective, we've got two ways of doing distance and perspective. We've got aerial perspective and we've got linear perspective. Aerial perspective and linear perspective. We haven't got much linear perspective in this, except that we've got larger things in the foreground here and more detail in the foreground, and we're going to go to less detail in the background. But that's coming into the aerial perspective. Aerial perspective is about cooler in the background and warmer in the foreground. So in this we're going to be slightly warmer with some of our foreground darks and slightly cooler in the background and we're going to be aware that the photograph tends to um, flatten things out. Photographs always flatten things. It's almost as dark here because of the exposure is down here. You see on my painting I've actually made it slightly cooler with those distances than I have in the foreground. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to, and this is what you need to do with your landscapes normally. Remember we've got the opposites for sunrise and sunset where it's warm in the background, cool in the foreground. But normally we will go warmer colours in the foreground, cool in the background. Remembering that warmer means browner or redder and cooler means more icy or blue. And every colour can be warmer or cooler. So we're just going to use a few colours today. We've got without sienna, Prussian blue, um, a little bit of magenta. If we want to go for a fraction warmer, into rose, we might not need it. Yellow ochre and white. We should be able to make our darks with the Prussian blue and the burnt sienna. And we should be able to use that Prussian blue to make very pale blues or warmer blues by adding the magenta or the brown. And we then very subtle colour mixing, very fine colour mixing. Also, we're going to be using glazes today. We're going to paint quite thinly and we're going to paint fat over lean. It sounds like some regime for the, <laughs> for the, for the diet, doesn't it? But um, we're going to paint thin coats on first, which once this board is dry, still so damp at the moment, but the beauty of MDF is even more so than canvas, it's very absorbent. And with just one coat of emulsion or so, it will still absorb the painting very quickly. So we'll be able to paint these glazes on, and they should soak into the board very quickly, so we'll be able to paint layers over the top quite quickly. The disadvantage, of course, of acrylics is they do dry so quickly. So if we're wanting to blend edges, We've got to do that while they're still wet, or we've got to overglaze them and work them up again. So you're going to have to learn the control of acrylic today. With oils, this paint will be much easier. Certainly these are painting the back now. So um, we can have methods of we're working from darks to lights or whatever. In this case, we're going to finish with our darks at the very end, yes. But we're going to start with our mid-tones. And we've got these subtle differences between cool and warm mid-tones here that we're going to really have to explore and play with. And I think today is going to be a very good example of everybody's painting is going to be so different from the same photograph mm -hmm. because we're going to have these as you explore and find these different forms and cools from different uh, greys. So we're making greys not with black and white, we'll be using our basics of brown and blue, greys again. And of course all the different blues and all the different browns if you want those different greys, which is fantastic. Uh, 
So if we wanted to make a greeny tint, then we're going to add more yellow ochre into the blue. If we're going to make a more browning, we add more black sienna, and so on. It's hard to know just where to start, but anyway, let, let's have a go here. I'm going, to, I'm going to start, and I normally start at my horizon here, and work my way through the sky with mid-tones, and we'll start playing with the subtle Wolverine crew. I'm going to start with a number six filbert, which is this one. <laughs> and I'm going to dip my brush in my orange juice. <laughs> I'm going to start with a mid-grey, sort of right in the smack in the middle of warm, cool grey. Um, I'm going to take, I've got to watch where I put my brush because I've got a whole series of colours here. I'm not really allowed to use the same colours as you, I must cheat. <laughs> so white. And remember, when we're making light colours, start with your white and add the colours to it gradually. So that, that's Prussian blue and white at the moment. Just lightening it right up over here. Quite a light turn at first. And I'm just going to put that on. I'm going to just explore for you, with you, some of these warm and cool stuff here. I'm looking at this area here, which is very exciting. With these little brush strokes, and I'm going to make those brush strokes into the direction of the clouds. Now, that's a fairly opaque paint. If I take a bit of water with that, I can thin that out. We can start glazing almost immediately, so look at the effects we can get. And not only can I use my brush, I can use my finger with water to actually blend effects in on the smooth board. You can do it on canvas, but the board is so much easier. And we're going to build these layers up. Now let's take a little bit of water into that, and take a little bit of burnt sienna into that. Not much, just, just a touch. To make it a fraction of warm as it comes over here. And you see, you can get these lovely, very delicate, almost like watercolour effects. And you can lift the paint and blend it in while it's still not quite dry. You can use water any time to blend it up. The water will lift it off slightly. This is where you're going to start exploring just what you can and can't do with it. Take some cream back into there, add it in, little strokes, feeling my way around these effects of the cloud. Let that dry a bit so that I can paint over it. So there's sort of two a warm and a cool grey immediately. A warmer still. Now I've also got the magenta I can use, so I'll take a little touch of magenta now and just show you how that works. So a little touch of magenta into this coming through here and look at that subtle, beautiful light we're getting there already in the sky. And that's just three, three very light mid-tone greys already that we're playing with. So up here it gets slightly stronger, I want to go a little bit darker, so I'm going to take that colour, add a little bit more of the Prussian blue to it, a little bit more of the burnt sienna, those two colours, and we'll go a bit warmer up here, a bit bluer up there, and you can start to see how we're getting the yellow respect to coming down. I'm we'll darker up here, I'm going to be lighter back here. Let's soften those in. You can use it in a watery way, you can fit it right down, you can build up over this, up and over, just like watercolour, but also the beauty of being able to use a heavier body. Let's look now, coming down there. To a much more golden. So I'm going to take the white, a little touch of yellow ochre, always the white first, a little touch of the yellow ochre, and I'm going to just add it to that magenta mix that I had earlier, magenta blue mix, come down here, and look at that lovely colour we get. That's a touch of magenta into it, it's not just yellow ochre, because I need that pure yellow ochre when I come up to here. So I'm just tinting it down a bit to get my grey tones. I can start to feather it up here, take these little marks. I can start to feather in some of these lighter clouds. Feathering is just using the tip of the brush to make a feathery edge mark. So we can just build up our mid-tones like that. <coughs> so let's have all of these various mid-tones. Leave your lights till the end. Just work up these mid-tones at first. Nothing to stop you when you've got the colour on your brush from coming down here immediately. For instance, I can come straight down here, put some of that colour there, if we've got it up here. Because whatever's going up here is going to be going on down here. Now, it's something that we noticed years ago, but usually reflections are either a tone lighter or a tone darker. They're never exactly the same. In this case, they're a tone darker, aren't they? Mm -hmm. But that's it. Have fun just playing with those few colours. We mix in intermediate greys 
in the sky and on the water yeah. lots so, of time. So, so start with the white. The white, yeah. yeah. And then the blue. Like the, the blue, yes. And, that the, one. and then that one. In the distance, I'm going to go to a bit more magenta. Down to that blue. I'm going to make a very pale blue, gold magenta down here. And it looks, it might look too strong when you're starting off here because of the white board. But don't be fooled by that white board. Um, we are going to be putting lighter over later, so for example, new years. And you said to put that pink across this blue, and I can let the blue glow through, almost like broken colour. I've got the pink right through here, that magenta I've got again, and bring it right through this edge, and bring it over the previous colours. Bring one colour over another. You see, this edge here, I'm just going to soften it now with yellow ochre and blue and white, and I'm softening that edge down. Once, once we lose all this white, Life becomes much easier. And the ball that's showing you through. So don't paint too thickly. I see one or two of you already painting a little bit heavily. Use the paint quite thinly. Get used to almost putting it on as, as, as a watercolour brush. A lot more white, more light blue coming up across this bit of sky here, for instance. Over the top, letting the just glow through. If you're not sure, come and have a closer look at my painting. When you get up close to it, you can actually see the colours I've done more. So if you're a bit confused, just come and have a closer look at this. You can actually see my little brush strokes and how I've accomplished what I have already. I'm using the blue with a bit more magenta down here. Look at the difference in that. But how thinly I'm painting it, first of all. That's why you've got the white board, is to be able to allow that to work. And it's getting used to painting one colour over another. Um, you're, you actually are painting very much like a watercolour at the moment, but lose all of that white and don't be afraid to use more white in the in the paint to, 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 to glaze one thing into another over here. Be quite bold. Don't put your lightest colours on yet, we're putting those on later. So be quite strong, it's mid-tones and darker tones at the moment. You'll notice as it comes across here, it's very warm there on the photograph at the front. And it goes bluer and cooler over here. And out the white, all the white's there. The white's always in it. There's always, I think every single time there's always a bit of white. And using white as a body colour yeah. to help me can link these colours together. Right the way through. Right, the sky is now dry enough for me just to start on my lighter tones here. So I'm going to give a bit of cool. A bit thicker now, I've got white in my mix. A little bit thicker in my head. Filling it in, just the tip of my brush, over the top of this. Right down to the distance here. Sometimes we will bring a shape out, like watercolour, by painting a light around it. I painted my very distant hills there, but because the sky isn't light enough in that spot, they're not going to work until I paint the lighter sky around that bit. Quieter than usual today. I'm going to be having today. Look yeah. right back into my water again because I've still got a lot of because I painted the paint very thin there, a lot of marks there I want to use. I think you can get a bit better idea of the, of the variety of colours and the um, graduation of colours or the delicacy of colours. I think it's good, yes. Painting the lighter colours into the sky now. So I'm going to be moving to very light blues or very light creams. No rush, we can go back and forth. So no, no, no panic. Just enjoy exploring. So don't worry about the stress side, but just enjoy exploring these different grades. <laughs> I know it seems so intense at the minute, but that's what you're here to do with painting, you have to enjoy it. It's not to... Uh, don't have to worry about the continual for me. So I, I can work between my very sort of white again, and these subtle shades of little tints of, of a little bit of yellow, a little bit of magenta. I'm going to use it fairly thinly. Let's just start to work these lights in here. So exactly, this is just yellow ochre and white at the moment. But my strokes are very much now, I'm drawing and I'm painting about the shapes of light that are in the sky. So I'm not copying it exactly, but I'm using the paint to simulate the effects in the sky that I can see. Every time you brush strokes, just making these feathery clouds up here. And I want to just glaze in, this is a little trick to use, just glaze in here between these two hills. I'm going to glaze a little bit of light just above that hill there. 
and blend it upwards to give the feeling of mist just coming up across there. And a little bit more warmth just into here. And look at the difference of that. This is a very light pink magenta coming into the yellow ochre now. And we get this lovely silvery light. Not only are we making all these various greys now and working between the opaque and the transparent paint and our brush skills of working about these clouds. Now once you've got this water done in the crisscross manner, then I would suggest that you carefully, once it's done, it's not done for me yet, but just watch this now. Once you've done the crisscross as you're doing with the clouds up here, down in the water, and you finish that bit, come back to your water. Remember what we said about shining water the other week? Mm -hmm. Verticals first and then horizontals. So come back to your water and start to work some of these verticals into it. Get the feeling of very shiny. You can go crisscross, you can go down and a little bit across. So you don't want your uh, X's, you don't want your crisscrossy strokes. I want you to then come into this and just drag these colours carefully lined together. We can work lighter, darks, darks over light, we can go backwards and forwards with this as often as we want. So I'm going to go a bit lighter here later. What I want to start doing now is these darker colours in the background that aren't yet even as dark as this, so I've got to be aware that I mustn't make these as dark as these. I've got to keep these a tad lighter than these. So if I mix pure, my, my darkest I can go is the pure uh, blue and, and, the, and, the, and the brown, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So I mustn't mix those pure for here. I've got to have a little bit of white or a little bit more blue. So what I'm going to do is take some Prussian blue again and a wee touch of the about Sienna. I'm going to take a little touch of white into that and a wee touch of magenta just to lighten it a bit. Let's just try that here. There we are. Look, it's quite subtle. Now I'm going to make the brush marks about the trees. <coughs> I'm going to use that brush this way and the tip of the brush to paint these trees in here, go right up into there, and even if it's light coming through there, right up through behind here. Little, little strokes of the brush vertically there to feel this back here, right back into here, down here. Mm -hmm. And if I put a little bit of blue, note the misting I did just now, um, where I put a bit of a lighter blue down lower. I'm going to do that in just a moment with this as well. That comes through this bush and tree here, right down to here. down to the water here, the reflections, the same colours reflected, so I'm going to bring some of that through here now, leaving a bit of light. I'm just starting to do a few little bits of ripple coming across as well, so verticals and horizontals are doing my reflections. Same, while I've got the colour on my brush, that same colour is coming through the reflections here from this bush that's going to come up through here. I'm just bringing those down to the water a little as well, little, little strokes. I'm going to do a bit stronger now, I'm going to add a little touch of yellow ochre to that. And look at the difference of that. There's, there's that sort of greeny tip look, which mm -hmm. now pushes that back. So let's take that greeny tip coming up through these trees here. It's going to reflect down below as well. Put up here. And reflect down here. It's very subtle. We're just really being very subtle today with that colour. My brush strokes are across here because this is the tree coming up, the branches are coming up through here. The branches are quite different up here to the ones. And I say we don't have to worry because we can come back with our lights over our darks. Back here and put light back into those trees if I need it later. There's my greeny tip look coming down here, right down. I've got a little brush dry out 
and start to break it down into the reflections of this. And if you see these dark areas reflecting in the water, well, that's when you start to put them in now. They're going to be across now. These are, are vertical with a little bit of reflection going on. So that's my background. Now, the fun bit, you need to go back. If you want to use your smaller filter for doing this feature, that's why we've got the little filters out, partly for the needs and partly for the same job. And then to come back to my very light room. A little touch of cream to it, just to get. This is a fun bit for me. Start painting in these lights. Now, if you want to watch this, watch my paint this light across here, and you start to bring out the the light shining through there, and I'm just going to bring it up through here again as well. Down to these reeds here, I can just bring my little brush and start to get the highlights of the light shining in between. Is that pure here. white? This is, no, this is very light blue. And a little touch of the yellow, it's just an off grey, you see. I'm reflecting the sky. So it's this colour here. I'm reflecting down up into here, these little bits of light. Dragging it across the surface gently. Here the same. I can be a bit creamer here later. I can put cream on later. This is very light blue at the moment. Just coming in between my tree here. A bit lighter there. And you just asked me, was that yeah. what colour was that? Was it pure white? It was white with a little touch of the blue on the cream. Now I'm going to take almost pure cream. So this is white with the tiniest touch of yellow ochre in it. I'm just going to bring that through here a little bit and look at the difference in that compared to the cool. See how that shines now? And if I need it anywhere else, and I can go over here, a little bit of light just shines through there. Just these few colours, keep really looking at those colours and seeing how they're going to come in the painting. I'm not at all what you're doing. You're doing just know that you've got a lovely effect of distance around here. The darks and the lights are seeing totally fine. Like, it's all it's okay. I'm really struggling. <laughs> I'm really struggling with it. I'm going to carry on with my velvet brush at the moment, but if you wish to use your little round brush, it doesn't matter whatever you're comfortable with. I'm okay with my little filbert because I can make quite a um, fine mark with that and I'm coming down to the reeds here which are a bit darker still so again it's my Prussian and burnt sienna and um, it's a little bit purer this time plenty of water in it so that I get a nice thin line with my brush if you make the paint too thick you can't get off your brush thinly, you can't make a blade. That may be for a little blade now. So I can paint in these darks back here. And this is, I say, quite a thin bit, so I'll reiterate that. Because I'm going to go darker into them afterwards. Like that mark I just made there, I'm going to go darker later. Watch them so when they, the reeds go thinner, there are less reeds in other words. Do you know what sort of thing your club wants me to do? I mean, are they watercolours or they've got an idea? They do all sorts. So they're happy to try anything? Is yes. there anything they particularly want to have a go at? Um, yeah. I'm not sure. Um, she didn't say. I mean, this lady does, does watercolour and the legs. Yeah. <coughs> it's fine. And I'm going to go back into this now with stronger than <coughs> colour. Right. I'm almost at the final stages now because once I've got those reeds and all I've got left to do is the foreground here and then some highlights in the background and we're almost there. It's lovely. We now need to choose a brush that will suit the marks we're making. A little bit like Chinese and Japanese brush paintings of birds and flowers and bamboo. If we look at, you can probably see it more clearly on, on this one, but if we look at the shapes of these nettles and brushes that are coming up here, that's obviously going to be a little fine round brush, isn't it? Mm -hmm. but these would be better with a filbert. 
because you can just imagine placing the right size filbert directly onto make those leaves, leaving the light in between. Keep twisting the brush. Remember, we never want one colour, one shape the same. It's always going to be slightly different. I'm actually using some pure burnt sienna to even shine on these leaves and to really make that little bit of gleam on the leaves in the foreground. certainly back into here now because the paper has sunk I can come back in and, and this is what I'm saying about yourself now you'll need to come back up here and paint your lights later on in between those little bits of branch and it's playing opposites so we're going on to a quite advanced work now because you've had three lessons <laughs> yes. you're coming into the advanced class now So now we're not just looking at warms and cool hues, we're looking at actual warms and against cools playing here. We'll write down amongst my reeds here. I want one ring there. It's silhouetted against the light, so I haven't got to do an awful lot of, of colour or painting. Tails there, the other ring is there, simple shape. and I can fiddle with it, but I would say that's about done. It was a hard painting to do today, so you all... Lovely. Is it burnt in or not? No, I don't think no. so. No, it's a bit tweaked. Well done, all of you. With a class here that's worked really hard through all of the workshops, and today was the hardest one of all, and... I'm sure that they agree that they've all learnt a lot with the struggle through their paintings today. And the point is that everybody has succeeded today. They struggled at first and it was stressful, but now the calm after the storm. So we've got such a diversity from the same photograph again of people learning all about these different greys and different lights. And I know it's been a real struggle today, and I'm very pleased with the students at the whole course. They've really tried hard, and they've succeeded in everything they've done. And today was the hardest of all. It was a big test, because today we've done colour, tone, colour, hue, brush um, skills, and even the texture and fluidity of the paint, haven't we? It's been quite an experience, but you've all succeeded, and it's really good. So I'll just go along the line of you again, please, and tell me what you feel you've gained. It's really, really, I mean, you've learned so much in these four sessions now that you can, you know, it'll go in all your painting, won't it? It'll affect your watercolours and everything. That's great. About the glazing techniques and the use of colour and uh, the blending as well. Yeah. Um, the and you would be able to link that in with the oil painting, wouldn't you now? Sorry? I think you'd be able to link this style oh, in with the oils because you do a lot of oil painting too. So that'll be good as well. Great. And it's been difficult finding these differences between the warm and cools, watching out for the warmth of the um, burnt sienna, then the magenta, and finding all these different greys, hasn't it? And blending soft edges, that was a problem for you at first as well. Just Because acrylic dries so fast, it's unforgiving in that way. Oiled you can blend, but acrylics 
so you've had to learn about how to keep those soft. Yeah. Most of what everybody else has said, really. I'm Cheat. Sure. Come on. <laughs> Great. Uh, yeah, so I, I think I've just had, for me anyway, um, as a real beginner, learning to use the brush in different ways to get techniques of how to create fine lines and to mix my paint so that the paint goes on more smoothly with the brush. So, yeah, brush technique really was the thing. So hopefully we've got another course arranged if anybody else wants to join you. Um, this coming... Uh, March, aren't we? We're looking to try and paint again, and we've got four completely different scenes worked out. We want to do what was it? We're going to do a cafe scene. We're going to do flowers. We're going to do a moorland or type That's with rocks and, and. What was the fourth one? Boats. 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 A harbour scene. That's right. So if anybody out there wants to join us coming March, then look on the Steel Rooms website or be in touch with the Steel Rooms and come join this wonderful bunch of ladies here. We're so lively and fun, and we'll do something even more fun then. Okay. Bye. <laughs> okay, we've got to meet the camera and hello. Oh, I like you. Sorry. Don't <laughs> smile at the camera. No, that's great. That's the end of this four week session, so we've done really well.